Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel Colinati. Today I'm going to do a book haul. This is my May and June 2018 book haul. Um, I don't really need an intro here, I guess. You know what a book haul is. I'm gonna jump straight into it. Um, I've already read half of these books, which is probably a first for me. I don't know if I've ever done a book haul where I've already read half of them, but it's kind of a combination of things that I hurried up and read right as soon as I got them, and then some copies of books that I read a while ago that I just really wanted a physical copy of, so I eventually got them. So I'm gonna start with the books that I have read first. I'm gonna go through them very quickly <laughs> because I've already talked about them in reviews or in wrap-ups, and I'm, I'm not going to sit here and talk about them all over again. First up is Summerland by Hanu Rayanyemi, which is his newest novel. By the time you're watching this, it should be out, and my review of it should also be up. Um, I was sent this copy for a review by the publisher, so thank you very much to them. Next up is Giant Days Volume 7 by uh, John Allison and Max Saren. I've talked about this in a wrap-up. I continue to thoroughly enjoy the series. It's just fluffy, fun, contemporary hijinks of university students in, in England. Revenant Gun by Yoon Ha Lee, which is the third and final book in the Machineries of Empire series. Yeah, read it, loved it. Um, even though I completely loved the book and reading it, I do, I don't quite know what I feel about some of the individual things that happen in it. Um, I kind of wanted other things to happen. I wanted more Mikadez, but the way it ended too was still really, really great. Um, then there is So Lucky by Nicola Griffith, which is about a woman who is diagnosed with MS and how that changes her life and her identity and how people view her and treat her. Um, the author also has MS and uh, the experience feels very raw and real. Um, it's fantastically written. It's a really great story. Uh, unfortunately, it was a bit difficult for me to read because it really triggered my hypochondria, which I was not expecting. but. It was worth it. I mean, reading it, getting past that was still completely worth it. Next up is Sphinx by Anne Goretta, which is translated from French by Emma Ramadan. This is a 1980s Ulipian novel, uh, which attempts to completely avoid grammatical gender, which is way more difficult in the original French. Uh, though I think that the English translation here um, renders that very well back into English. So this is... You know, it's a genderless love story with an unnamed narrator and their lover. Their genders are never revealed, at least with the language, grammatically speaking. And I thought it was really good. I liked the love story. It's very tragic. Uh, but I also just really liked the conceit of this, the, the constraint with the trying to avoid gender. Um, especially with the translator's note, um, it, it was very interesting to discover how drastically the story and the tone and even the characters' personalities had to be massaged and shifted in order to avoid gender in the original French. So I thought it was a really cool book. I really want to read more things like that. Another book that was sent to me from the publisher is Amber Lowe by Laura Elena Donnelly. Uh, Tor also sent the sequel in a matching edition, um, Armistice, which I will show you in a minute because I haven't read it yet. But this is one of my favorite books of 2017. Basically like spies and cabarets and the rise of fascism and it was really, really great. <laughs> I'm glad to have a copy of it because I think I will definitely reread it. I may also try to get my dad to read it. Not sure if that's his sort of thing or not, but I keep trying. <laughs> Moving on, the next thing is um, Ursula K. Le Guin, Conversations on Writing with David Naiman. Um, this is pretty old. I missed hauling it in a previous book haul, so I'm mentioning it here. Uh, but this is a kind of a transcript of three interviews that Naiman did with Le Guin, and it's really beautiful. It's perfect for new readers of Le Guin and longtime readers. It serves as both an introduction and a, and a recap of her like greatest hits of her, her criticism and her thoughts and everything. Thing. Um, it's also a completely beautiful little book. Um, it's a naked hardcover and the inside of it is also laid out just beautifully. I thought it was gorgeous and an absolute joy to read. So um, another one that I've talked about is I Met a Traveler in an Antique Land by Connie Willis. This is a little novella, the subterranean press edition. Um, it's a wonderful story for book lovers but there's not that much more to it, just somebody stumbling into a book saving operation and really not understanding how it works. So I liked it. 
Um, another book that I read a long time ago, but I really wanted my own copy of it, and that is The Rise and Fall of Dio Dio by Neil Stevenson and Nicole Galland. <sighs> I read this book right when I needed it. It was so fun, <laughs> and it made me laugh quite a bit. I flew through it, and it's another one that I would really like to reread. Hopefully it's as good and as funny on a reread. One of the things that I like the most about this is the hilarious jokes through like document design and official correspondence and things like PowerPoint presentations. It's just, as somebody who works with a lot of um, communication and document genres and stuff, it's hilarious. It's so funny. <laughs> it's also another one that's basically a time travel story. And I call it fantasy because it concerns witches and there's actual magic, but a lot of people call it science fiction. I'm right, you're wrong. Or just ignore me. <laughs> another one, um, Mira's Last Dance by Lois McMaster Bujold. This is one of the Penrick and Desdemona novellas in the hardcover subterranean press edition that matches all of my other ones, which are yeah, okay, they're not actually in the frame, but they're down there somewhere. Um, yeah, I, I read all of these in ebook. I snap them up as soon as Bujold uh, kind of self-publishes them, and then I pre-order the, yeah, let's say it, pretty expensive um, print editions, and it's so worth it. Um, the covers of all of them, including this one, are by Lauren saint Onge, and I love them. I love them so much, and I'm really glad they've stuck with the same artist for all of the covers. And last but not least, for the books that I've already read, I broke down and I bought a copy of Semiosis by Sue Burke for myself. Um, I still need to do a review of this, and that's why I bought a copy of it, because there's only one at my library and somebody has it checked out. <laughs> So I have it. I will attempt to do a decent review at some point because I loved it. And now moving on to the books that I haven't read. These first three I'm not going to get to for a while because they are books 10, 11, and 12 in the Foreigner series by C.J. Cherry. They are Deceiver, Conspirator, and Betrayer. That's not the actual order they're supposed to go in, I'm pretty sure, but I can never remember. Um, I need to reread the first nine books in the series before I can read these for the first time. I took the first book in the series, Foreigner, on vacation with me in April because I was going to reread it then. Only I didn't because my dad ended up rereading it. And I first started reading the Foreigner series and CJ Cherry in general because my dad started bringing these books home from the library when I was in my early teens. We basically read them at the same time. So my dad then proceeded to reread all of my copies of the Foreigner books and then went on to read like the next nine or 10 that have been published, because there are like 18 or 19 of these books out now. So he's read the entire freaking series, and I haven't even managed to reread the first book yet this year. <sighs> it's giving me some motivation, though. I gotta catch up with him now. <laughs> so anyway, um, these three will be waiting for me whenever I get done rereading the first nine. Moving along, the next one is The Paths of the Dead by Stephen Bruce. This is one of the books from another series that's set in the same world that he wrote the Vlad Taltos fantasy series in. I've all caught up on that series, so I've been collecting the books in this other one um, to read at my leisure. I've just been buying these used mass market copies of them. Uh, my libraries don't have copies, so I thought I was justified in paying a couple of bucks for each one just to have on hand. <laughs> um, but really, I don't know anything about them. I think they're set in a very, very different time period from the Vlad Taltos books, but some of the characters are also in them because they're like immortal and thousands of years old, something like that. Engine Summer by John Crowley, which is one of the uh, lovely yellow spined SF masterworks. You know I collect these so I kind of find excuses to buy them. I've been very good about not buying tons of them so far this year, really only the ones that um, I need or I've already read and stuff. Um, but yeah, I picked up a copy of this because I thought it might be a pick for a group read or a buddy read. It turns out I'm going to be reading a different John Crowley book um, for that, but I thought it'd be nice to have on hand and my friend Tara has been reading it and really enjoying it so far. Um, the description on the back of this is not really what I thought it was going to be. Um, the cover looks kind of post-apocalyptic, but the description makes it sound much more gentle. <laughs> so here we go. In the drowsy tranquility of Little Belair, the truthful speakers lead lives of peaceful self-sufficiency, ignoring the depopulated wilderness beyond their narrow borders. It is a society untouched by pain or violence, and the past is barely remembered. 
But when Rush that speaks leaves his home on a pilgrimage of self-enlightenment, he finds the landscape haunted by myths and memories. The overgrown ruins reflect a world outside that is stranger than his people ever dreamed. Which actually sounds really good, you know? If it's not violent and scary, then yeah, I really want to read that. These next two I was also sent for a review by the publisher. I should probably have put all of these in their own category in this book haul, and I didn't do that because I'm so disorganized this morning, can you tell? The first one is Gate Crashers by Patrick S. Tomlinson. I can't remember if I requested this one or not. I don't remember doing that, but I got a copy. Um, on the front it says, in space no one can see you screw up, and on the back it says, mankind just discovered that they aren't alone in the galaxy. They just don't know it yet. It's supposed to be really funny science fiction, I think, and I'm, I'm down with that. And the next one is that matching copy of Armistice by Laura Elena Donnelly, which is the sequel to Amber Low. This came out in May. I'm really looking forward to it. I really haven't heard anybody talking about this second book. I think that Kelsey from The Fancy Hat Lady Reads has talked about it and kind of set my expectations for it. I know some um, new characters appear and some old characters don't. It's kind of different and less violent, and actually that sounds a lot better to me. So yeah, really looking forward to that one. And the very last book in this book haul is Ex Libris, Stories of Librarians, Libraries, and Lore, which is edited by Paula Garan, who is a really well-known editor in the SFF field. Um, this I put on a wish list ages ago because Andrea, or Infinite Text down in the comments, mentioned it to me. I think right before it came out, I don't know if she's read it or not, but we were talking about stories about librarians like In the House of the Seven Librarians by Ellen Clages and um, In Libris by Elizabeth Bear in particular, and she told me this existed and I was like, an entire collection about librarians and libraries? Of course I'm gonna pick that up. So the table of contents on this looks fantastic. I've read a couple of the stories already, like Ellen Clage's and Elizabeth Baer's stories. I've read the one by Ruthanna Emrys, which is actually kind of a horror story, but I really liked it. Um, there's a Kelly Link story I've read, which I'm not really into Kelly Link's um, fiction, unfortunately. Um, I've also read If on a Winter's Night, A Traveler by Xia Jia, or I'm not sure how you pronounce her name, um, which I also liked. But this has stories by Cage Baker, who I would love to read more by. I didn't realize until some years ago that she had written so much short fiction. I've really only read her, her novels. There's a Ray Bradbury story, a story by Norman Partridge, um, Holly Black, Ken Liu, Sarah Monette, Christine Catherine Rush, oh cool. I missed that before. I really wanted to read some of her fiction. Um, A.C. Wise, Tansy Rayner Roberts, Amal El Matar, a story by her I've never read. Scott Lynch's In the Stacks, have I read that? I don't think I have. <laughs> um, Gregory Benford, Jack McDevitt, Eduardo Albert, who I've never heard of. So yeah, I'm really excited about this one. I think I'm gonna really love it. And that's it, I would hold books up, but um, as usual, they just kind of exploded around me while I threw them in various directions while I was filming. I'm really messy like that. So yeah, I think I'm awake enough now to go film other things without like falling flat on my face, so I'm gonna go do that. Thank you very much for watching this video in which I slowly wake up. <laughs> This is gonna be a mess, but hopefully you enjoy that. But yeah, let me know if you've read any of these or if you want to, if you think I should prioritize any of these that I haven't already read. And I'll be back to talk to you again soon. And until then, bye.